I don't think when Dallas saw the Wild on the preseason schedule, they expected to run into a brick wall. And as the song says, the kids are all right. We got a lot to discuss for the Wild's 5-2 preseason win over Dallas today on Locked on Wild. You're locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. And just as a reminder, Locked On Wild is free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, we recap yet another 5-2 to two win for the now 3-0 and Minnesota Wild in the preseason, this time against the Dallas Stars. A very solid game for Jesper Wallstead. And more of what we have seen from Tyson Jost, Sam Steele, and Marco Rossi. So we'll recap all of that and continue to look ahead towards what this team may look like come opening night on today's episode. My name is Seth Topol, host of Lockdown Wild, veteran Minnesota sports content producer with well over a decade's worth of experience covering your favorite Minnesota sports teams and now guiding you through the preseason here on Locked on Wild. Stop me if you've heard this before. A 5-2 to two win for the Minnesota Wild. Yes, that was the score of their last preseason game, but winning again 5-2 to two here tonight. And a lot of the future on display for the Wild in this one, obviously centering around uh, Jesper Wallstead getting the start, getting the entire game against the Dallas Stars, and Really looking great, I thought, uh, considering uh, what ended up happening around him. He was uh, he was poised. He was pretty calm and collected in the net. But when he needed to make those big kind of flashy saves, he did. He was great with traffic in front of him. And uh, he stayed, for the most part, quiet on the routine saves. And just really, I think, gave a very inspiring performance. We were talking in the preview for uh, today's game, or last night's game, I should say, against the Stars. We were just talking about kind of using this as a barometer to see where Wallstead is at in his development as uh, a prospect in the Minnesota Wild system. Because that Dallas team played a lot of their regulars, not all of them by any means, but they played a lot of their regulars, and with the Wild not playing um, as many regulars in their lineup, it led to a lot of five on five time for the Dallas Stars. And so, therefore, a lot of shots that Wallstead ended up facing over the course of the game. He ended up 33 out of 35 in saves. And uh, there were plenty of instances in which it was multiple shots right out in front of the net. And Wallstead just did a really good job of. Um, of taking care of business and making sure that nothing really snowballed uh, against him there in the net. He did a good job of tracking the puck through most of the game, although as we'll talk about in the second goal that he gave up, just an unfortunate situation that um, was just one of those bad luck bounces that uh, that he ended up taking on. But we'll break those goals down here in just a second. More so just impressed to see his ability to do all the different things that you look for from a goalie. Tracking the puck well, he did a good job of, in some instances, deflecting the save off to the side, allowing his teammates to go get it, um, knowing when to pounce on the puck, when to uh, to stop play on the ice. Just a lot of those things that uh, that he did really well, and so I I came away thoroughly impressed by what we saw from Wallstead here. In this one. Now, the two goals that he did give up, let's consider the context as to what happened on them. The first goal that he gave up was on one of numerous Minnesota Wild power plays in which a bad pass ended up being 
intercepted by the Dallas Stars, leading to a three-on-one. I don't know if I have ever seen a three-on-one shorthanded odd man rush off of a Minnesota Wilds power play. So Wild turned it over in the uh, the Dallas zone. Three Stars players at the top of the zone were able to take the puck, come back down the other end, and trying to stop a three-on-one is difficult for a goalie to do. And Walstead committed to one side, but the Stars obviously had multiple passing options and ended up scoring a shorthanded goal on uh, on the wild power play. More on that in a little bit. The second goal that Walstead gave up was from the top of the zone. And Walstead, it was a low shot. Walstead did a good job of getting getting low, getting his pads low to try to make sure that it didn't sneak under him. So he did that part fine. The problem was that the, I believe it was his right pad, his legs down like this. The puck hit off of the top of his right pad just enough that it went from going, you know, straight at the net to kicking up and in past Wallstead, and so he was in the right position to play the puck. It just kind of rode up a little higher than he was anticipating, and I don't think he also tracked that puck the best, but again, got in the right position to play it. It just hit off the top of his pad um, with his legs down to try to prevent the puck from sneaking under him. Hit off his pad, caromed into the net, And so that was the second goal. So that one, like I said, bad luck bounce. And then there was another goal that the Stars thought they had, but it was waved off due to it being batted out of the air. Um, Wallstead, it it hit in front. He popped up. He would have, if he had a split second longer, would have been able to track the puck and pull it in. But then the Dallas player batted it out of the air and um, ended up getting it into the net, but that one was waved off because the stick was, was a high stick. So all in all, the two goals given up by Wallstead. One of them is just a kind of a an island situation for a goalie with that three on one, and then you know the other one is just a situation of just an unlucky bounce. I think beyond that, he handled himself incredibly well, and. For it being a preseason game, I was I was really excited to see what he was able to do, and boy, he did not disappoint um, in uh, in this one here tonight. So, Wallstead, I think, was your uh, your top star, your one star for the night. But um, a couple of guys that we have been talking about a very awful lot here throughout the preseason also had impressive games in this one tonight. And so, as we continue to recap. The 5-2 win for the Minnesota Wild over the Dallas Stars. We'll talk about Marco Rossi and Tyson Jost. We'll do that after this here on Locked on Wild. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for football betting info this season. You can find all the latest player developments, plus team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, betonline.net remains your continued source for all of your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, golf, and soon, the NBA and the NHL. So head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. You can find all that and more at BetOnline, where the game starts. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild, once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen, make sure you are checking out the Locked on NHL podcast to give you a full look at everything going on Throughout the NHL, Locked On NHL is free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts. And speaking of wherever you listen to your podcasts, Locked On Wild, along with all of your other favorite Minnesota podcasts, are now available on Roku and Amazon Fire TV, 
as part of Locked On Sports Minnesota. More great local sports coverage 24-7, and it is free of charge. Just download the Locked On Sports Minnesota app today on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. Three more assists for Tyson Jost, a goal and an assist for Marco Rossi, and a couple of assists for Sam Steele on the night here for the Wild. And it's becoming more and more apparent that these three guys are going to make some noise for the Minnesota Wild this season. Their roles are starting to be a little more fleshed out to the point where I am comfortable here today, the 30th of September. I am comfortable enough calling the race for the Matt Boldy line as follows. Matt Boldy, Marco Rossi, Tyson Jost. End of story. I am willing to put that combo together and leave them be for what we've seen in the preseason. We've seen so far Tyson Jost get minutes on the power play. Granted, he's been one of the you know more veteran players in the couple of games that he has played so far. Power play, penalty kill, and he has uh, been a top-line guy in the two preseason games that he's played so far here this preseason. But at the same time, you got to do something with those minutes in order to continue to get them. And Jost just continues to motor. He continues to grind. He continues to really show a determination to be a bigger part of this team. And so I, I have seen enough from him. Another solid game for Marco Rossi. And for Rossi, it just it impresses me so much just how businesslike he is with what he does out there on the ice. He's constantly battling for pucks on the perimeter. That shorthanded goal that he had was a great feed. Um, and he just he hammered it home. He didn't mess around with it at all. He got a clean feed. And he absolutely buried that one into the back of the net. And, you know, he had an assist on the night as well. He just continues to impress and continues to impress me as someone who goes about his business in a very veteran-like way as a player going into what will be his rookie season in the NHL. So you add that poise and that determination of Marco Rossi plus his playmaking ability. You add the just like he's being shot out of a cannon play from Tyson Jost here throughout the uh, the start of the preseason. Again, three assists for him in this game to add to the two power play goals he had against Colorado. You put those two together who are absolutely fully want to capitalize on the opportunity that they are going to be given. You give a couple of guys like that to Matt Boldy and somebody who, like Boldy, is primed to have a huge season this year, I think that line is going to be a lot better than people realize, and I think that is the route that the Wild should go to give them a second scoring option, uh, much like the Fiala-Boldy line of this past season. Now, what do you do for the rest of it? I am impressed with what we've seen from Sam Steele so far. Yes, some of it's been uneven, but the guy continues to motor, and it seems like he is getting better and better as he gets more comfortable with his teammates. You put him as the fourth-line center, I think, between Connor Dewar and Brandon Duhame. I We haven't seen that line combo yet because I think they're trying to just give Steele more opportunities out on the ice. I think that would be a combo that would be really fun to watch as a fourth line for now. And then to fill in on the grief line, go with a more defense-oriented guy in Freddie Goudreau. I know there's been a ton of talk coming into this season as to can Freddie Goudreau do it again. You don't necessarily need him to at this point. Just let him be another defensive grinder on that grief line until Jordan Greenway is ready to come back. And then at that point, whoever is playing the best between Goudreau and Steele, you can rotate those guys in and out as needed. But I think the reason we're seeing Steele play with so many people is that the Wild want to have 
more options this year. This is another point that we have hammered home. The Wild want more options this year to be able to rest players and to be able to feel like they don't have to rush people back from injury. So if you have something that would happen to where Ryan Hartman ends up being injured, you have options for what to do at that top line center position. You've got a couple of guys that can fill in on those spots depending on how they're playing. So roster flexibility, Sam Steele can give you it. Tyson Jost, I think, as as much as he helped out the team in that role last year, being able to uh, to move up and down different line combinations, I think with what we've seen from him, let's take him off that role and let him just focus on being a part of that line with Marco Rossi and Matt Boldy. Leave the roster jumping to Freddie Goudreau and to Sam Steele. Let those guys be the ones that move up and down the lineup and go with that. That's what I'd like to see happen. We'll see if Dean Evison is listening or if Bill Guerin's listening to this. Uh, shout out to you both if you are. Uh, appreciate uh, having you listen to the show. But um, it's it's been fun to see these guys you know, get in there and provide quality minutes over the uh, the course of these last couple of games. Now, I want to talk about the defense as well because we saw this new look lineup that uh, has been teased by Dean Evison. We saw Jonas Brodeen and Jared Spurgeon play on the same line and shocker, they both scored. So we're going to talk about that a little bit as we uh, finish up today's episode, recapping a 5-2 to two win for the Minnesota Wild. More to come after this here on Lockdown Wild. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. And if you missed it, Lockdown Wild, along with our other Minnesota podcasts, are now available on Roku and Amazon Fire TV as part of Lockdown Sports Minnesota. More great local sports coverage 24-7, and it is free of charge. So just download the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app today on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. Jared Spurgeon, Jonas Brodeen, Jake Middleton, Kalen Addison, and the third combo of Ryan O'Rourke and Andre Schuster. Wanted to finish with that here for today's episode because, you know, we've heard Dean talk about throughout the offseason, wanting to try to maybe go with a speed and a strength version of this wild decor. And we saw the Spurgeon and Brodeen pairing tonight. They both scored goals in this one. And the other thing too, you know, going up against a mostly regular lineup for the Dallas Stars, I didn't feel like with the exception of that three-on-one during the wild power play. And I'm willing to, I'm willing to give the wild power play mostly a pass tonight. And here's why. Because of the fact that you're going up against mostly, save Jason Robertson, mostly the top power players and penalty killers for the Dallas Stars. And the Wild had a bunch of younger players in the lineup, so it was a little disjointed to say the least, but the penalty kill did not give up anything, which is encouraging. And I, I continue to like the structure that we've seen from the wild penalty kill so far. The power play did get another goal tonight, but they gave up the shorthanded goal and that was just hideous. But it was disjointed and so I'm willing to I'm willing to give that a pass. I did not observe any major breakdowns defensively from the wild here tonight, which I think is encouraging because you know, you've got your two arguably your two best defenders outside of Jake Middleton on that top line, so you worry about there being maybe a loss defensively where you are a little bit too top heavy and you, you then are putting a couple of guys uh, together on that next line that maybe aren't as good as Spurgeon and Brodeen. But I just, I thought all of those guys played solid. You know, you didn't see anything that really uh, jumped out as, Oh, that was, that was not good by any of these guys. And you know, so I think it's I think it's encouraging. It was intriguing as we talked about in the preview of last night's game. Intriguing to see those four get put together with Matt Dumba not playing. 
as a potential tease to what this decor could look like after this season. But at the end of the day, you want your defense to do their job and you want to see the number of times where you're like, yep, that was definitely a mistake on defense. You want to see that minimized as much as possible. And they did that tonight. The offense took advantage of the special teams opportunities and the wild did a good job of sustaining some looks in the Dallas offensive zone and the defense there was nothing I can really point to to where I said, you know, this is this is a breakdown. We can't have these. So just a solid workmanlike effort, I thought, from the wild defense in this one tonight, considering the amount of time that uh, the Stars controlled the puck in this one. And you'd expect that they would with how young the wild offense was by and large throughout um, throughout the lineup. So thought the defense did did good. Um, it was an encouraging debut for that Spurgeon Brodeen line and, you know, Middleton and Addison were solid as well. So liked to see that. And I would imagine we'll see more of that here as the preseason continues. couple of things to wrap up. The Matt Ciccarello power play goal was disgustingly, it, it was just, it was so good to see Zuccarello be able to, and, and you know, he was doing it because of what Kirill Kaprizov did to the St. Louis Blues in the playoffs where he banked the shot in off of Ville Husso's leg. So there's the Dallas player right in front of the net. And Kudobin has turned, and so he's facing the far side of the net, kind of outside the crease. And Matt Zuccarello is essentially, like, parallel to the net. So it's just an impossible angle for a shot. And he banks it off of the Dallas player's leg in for the goal. And you know he did that just to say, hey, Kirill, anything you can do, I can do better. Um, God, that, that is such a, that's just such a fun rivalry between those two. And, you know, we, we say it all the time. They're perfect line companions with how they play and how they feed off of each other out there on the ice. Uh, the one thing from a negative side, you know, and it's not to say that there weren't things that happened, but watching this game, I didn't really see anything notable from Mr. Adam Beckman. Would have liked to have seen him maybe have a highlight or two that you can hang your hat on. And again, not to say that he wasn't, you know, motoring and doing his thing, but there just wasn't any sort of that signature play like we saw with Rossi. Um, Mason Shaw had uh, had a great night as well um, as an intriguing prospect that could help the Wild uh, down the line at the center position. And a couple of other guys were really solid too. Just didn't really see that like that go-to moment from Adam Beckman. Not to say that he won't have that between now and the end of the preseason, but this is the kind of thing where as this roster gets cut down, you being given another opportunity like Brandon Baddock was tonight all hinges on the coaches seeing maybe one thing that stands out from what you did out on the ice. Now, Baddock tonight um, got into a fight, got a game misconduct, so his night ended early, but uh, laid a heavy hit. And then I, 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 the way I saw it was he was kind of, I think, I think the fighting was, the invitation was extended and he accepted. And so how he ended up being the only one that got a penalty in that case is kind of beyond me, but that that's not the point is the point I'm making is the reason Brandon Baddock played again against Dallas was because he had some things that stood out to the coaching staff against Colorado. Those are the kinds of things that keep you on the roster as the roster gets cut down further and further. Not doing those things is what sends you to Iowa. And so hopefully Beckman will have a couple of those moments here before the preseason's over. Really like him as a prospect. Just, just one of those quiet nights that he had um, amongst uh, a lot of other good things that the Wild did here in this one. So that's our wrap on the Wilds' 5-2 to two win over the Dallas Stars to get to 3-0 and on the preseason. And uh, you can stay tuned for many more preseason updates 
all throughout the rest of the preseason here on Locked on Wild. Make sure, as mentioned, you're following us wherever you listen to your podcasts. Subscribe on YouTube. Hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any of our videos throughout the rest of the preseason and into the regular season as well. We will keep you up to date on all things Minnesota Wild related with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked on Sports Podcast Network.